Hey guys, welcome back to the Convo Couch. My name is Connie. I'm Sun. And today we have our very special guest, Melinda Janizewski, who is the founder and creative director for the first um, drink and sip studio in the Southern Hemisphere. That's correct. And Australia. Um, she's also an entrepreneur. She has a history in oh, so many different things. So we're, <laughs> oh, we're going to explore that today, but thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So tell us, yeah, let's start with Cook and Canvas. How did it happen? How did it start? How did you breathe it into life? Uh, so back in America, working for a big Fortune 50 company, uh, being very stressed out, um, was always looking for ways to kind of de-stress as you do. People were like, oh, go do yoga. Oh, you should try this. And the whole time I'd be doing yoga in Downward Dog, I'd be like, oh my God, I've got to do the laundry. I've got, I've got these bills to pay. How am I going to make my quota? Um, so none of that would really relax me. And um, at the time, I was actually training and competing as a professional athlete. Mm. And so that was kind of my happy place of training six days a week, twice a day. Um, but even that, um, you know, can only do so much. And a lady I worked with one day just said, um, hey, you know, on Friday when everybody goes out to have drinks, do you want to go do this thing where you drink and paint? But you don't have to drink. I know you can't drink and, you know, you can bring one of your protein shakes. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to paint. And she's like, yeah, no, that's the whole point. They, they'll show you step by step and you can bring whatever you want to drink. And it's just a fun way to relax. And I was like, well, I'll try anything, you know, at least once. Yeah. So, yeah, why not? I'm, I'll go. Um, I didn't ask what we were painting. I really, I really didn't care. I, I more went for the... Oh, as something to relax and do something different and creative. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so I went and I said to her, uh, how long is this? Like a half hour, an hour? And she's like, oh, it's about three. And I kind of was in shock. and was like, you want me to sit still for three hours and not move? She was like, yeah, you know, but it'll be fine. And I was like, this isn't going to go well. Um, and it was probably the first time in as long as I can remember that I did not look at my phone for three hours. I did not think about my sales quota. I didn't think about the laundry and the grocery shopping and anything. I was so entrenched in the colors and this blank canvas and this paint and the freedom that it gave you to just kind of turn your brain off. Um, and I just remember the artist saying at the end, okay, we've got a few more minutes, final touches, and we're gonna take a photo. And I thought, wait, what, what time is it? And I picked up my phone for the first time and I was like, how is it 10 o'clock at night? Like it just went by like that. And I went home that night and I slept like a baby for the first time. Like I, I wasn't waking up in the middle of the night. I'm a terrible mm -hmm. sleeper and I just slept so great. And I woke up the next morning and I went in my kitchen and I saw the painting and I went, I painted that. <laughs> so after, uh, you know, getting everybody to try it, started dating my now husband, Michael. And I thought, oh, he's coming from Australia to visit. I'm going to take him to go paint and sip and show him how great of an artist I am. And booked us in for a class, packed a bottle of wine and some snacks, and um, thought, this is going to be such a fun, romantic, you know, way to spend an afternoon with somebody, you know, that you're just starting to date and get to know each other better without it being awkward. Yeah. And so took him to this class and um, about... 15, 20 minutes in, he raised his hand in front of the whole class and said to the artist, oh, I don't really like what you're painting. Can I paint whatever I want? And I was just like, oh my God, shut up and just listen. Would you just, just follow what they're saying? And the lady was really sweet. She's like, yeah, no, absolutely. Paint whatever you want. Go for it. And he turned his canvas away from me and started painting. And I thought either this is going to be a hot mess or I'm in really big trouble. <laughs> Um, and sure enough, he turned his painting around at the end and it was beautiful. Mm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you can paint. And he's like, well, yeah, I was actually going to be go to college for art. And instead I got in a fight with my art instructor and I went to law school instead. <laughs> I was like, well, that's interesting. Okay. So <laughs> there went my plan of like showing off of how good I could paint and it kind of backfired in a great way. So, um, about fast forward a year later, Michael asked me to move to Australia and I was just finishing up my cardiac degree doing ultrasound um, on top of competing as a professional athlete. And working full time. And working full time. time. <laughs> um, and I just um, thought, how am I going to move to the other side of the planet for somebody I've only known for like a year, year and a half, give up everything, my education, my friends, my family, all of my belongings, and move to the other side of the planet? 
and um, I got really stressed out. Mm. And I was like, um, I, I, what do I do? How do I do this? And I just told him, I said, listen, I need, I need to think. I just, I'll call you back. I just need time to think about this. And um, the first thing that came to my head is I just need to go turn my brain off. I just, this is too stressful. This, um, I had so much anxiety. I'm like, what am I going to do? I literally called the local paint and sip studio and I said, do you have a class on today? And they said, yeah, we actually have one in about an hour. I'm like, I'll be there. The guy's like, don't you want to know we're painting? I'm like, no, I don't even care. And I rocked up and it was a kid's class painting Hello Kitty. <laughs> well, you're the, like the only adult in the room. Yes. I was the only adult in the room other than, you know, the gentleman that was running the studio. Yeah. And I didn't care. And I had such a good time in my own world just painting this pink Hello Kitty. And I thought, if nothing else, I'm going to paint this for his daughter. Nice. Yeah. And I went home really relaxed and happy and um, gave him a call and he, I said, oh, I feel so much better now. And he's like, oh, why? Did you figure out what you're going to do? Because we found out when we were um, looking into me moving here that my degree wouldn't actually count here, that I would I have see. to do another whole two years. Um, so I said, no, uh, I haven't really figured it out, but I know I'm going to do a lot of these painting and sipping classes until I figure it out. And he said, oh, I don't think we have that here. And an instant light bulb went off and I was like, I'll call you back. And I hung up on him. <laughs> and I just hung up on him straight away and I started Googling. And now, granted, this was six and a half, seven years ago. You know, drink and paint Australia, drink and paint Melbourne, paint and sip, everything. Nothing came up. I was like, how? Mm. This is so big in America. How does it not exist in all of Australia? And that's when the light bulb went on. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could share this with more than just my friends and family this would be amazing. I already went to nursing school, did cardiac, <laughs> nutrition, fitness. I was like, I've always wanted to help people. Mm. I've always wanted to help people mm. feel better. Um, and I thought, wow, I could like share this and give that same feeling mm. with everybody in Australia. What a great way to like make an impact and make a difference being in another country. Um, so I called him back and I said, I've got it. He said, got what? And I said, I know what I'm going to do. And he yeah. said, are you going to do two more years of school? I said, <laughs> no. I said, I'm going to open up a paint and sip studio. And he was like, okay, <laughs> sure. If that's what will get you over here, no problem. Yeah. I'm all for it. I'm like, okay. You, you said you were a professional athlete. Yes. I, I was so surprised when I discovered that. I was like, she can do this as well. <laughs> Um, tell us how you got into it and what kind of um, athlete you are and that process of it. Because I think there's a lot of creativity that comes in, in sports people as well. In creating, much that, so. in, in creating their own body, creating their sports. So, yeah, talk us through that. Um, so when I was working in corporate America, um, it's fast paced. Mm. You know, imagine a Fortune 50 company and you're one of very few females and everything's fast paced sales and you don't really get a lot of time to eat and you're working long hours. So you pretty, I got in the habit of pretty much eating on the go and eating in the car while I'm driving to the next appointment and living in Texas where they say everything is bigger in Texas. It is very true, including myself. <laughs> I probably in the first year and a half of living in Texas gained about... 15 to 17 kilos okay. um, and just well, got up for work one morning and none of my work suits would fit and I sat on the floor and was like this has got to stop this will yeah. this will never happen again like I'm not going to buy bigger clothes and I went into work that day and the girl that was on my team did some kind of fitness stuff and she was always eating like these little small meals and everybody was always complaining that her food smelled and me being an underdog my whole life I kind of gravitated towards mm. her and was like, leave her alone. At least she's doing something healthy. What are you doing? Um, and would defend her. And one day I just went into work and I said, okay, whatever you're doing and eating, teach me. Because I need to look like this and not so much like this. And she did. And funny enough, I just saw her two weeks ago. She flew all the way out to LA to visit with me. Um, and we've been friends now for about 16 years. Amazing. And she took me under her wing and was like, okay, so you've got to eat this and do this. And in the beginning, I was like, you're crazy. No. Um, and after about a year and a half, I lost all this weight. I had so much more energy. I was so healthy and happy. Um, and she invited me to go see one of her shows competing. Okay. And she was competing for her pro card to become um, an IFBB pro in fitness and bodybuilding. Okay. 
So I went to a couple of her shows and thought, wow, these people are like real life superheroes. <laughs> the discipline, the everything that they put into it, the sacrifice, it's incredible. Like you're watching people on stage that are the real live Wonder Womans and mm-hmm. Supermans. Um, and I just thought it was, re- and they were all, the camaraderie was really incredible. Mm. I thought like, wow, really hungry, diet it down people behind stage, spray tanned. It has got to be like everybody's angry and yeah. not getting along. No. Everybody was so encouraging and supportive and cheering each other on. And I'm like, wow, like, so who back here don't you like? Like, who's the girl you want to take down? And she was like, nobody. Wow, yeah. I'm not competing against these people. I'm like, yes, you are. And she's like, no, I'm competing against myself. And that's when it clicked to me. I was like, oh, wait, you're actually just trying to be the best version of yourself. You're trying to improve yourself not not compete against everybody that's that's a really great way of looking at things um and so even when i would go to the gym or see other people it wasn't like i want to look better than her or i look like this it was like i just need to be the best version of me possible and so one day after not seeing her moving away for six or eight months she saw me and was like you look incredible like look how amazing you look like you should do a show and i thought <laughs> In my head, I still saw the old version of me. As you do, after you lose a bunch of weight, you still have that old mirror image of yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, you're crazy. No, I'm not getting on a stage in a bikini in front of 10,000 people. Not happening. She's like, no, I can help you. Like, it'll be a lot of fun. You'd have like three months to prepare. I can get you ready. We can do the show together. There's an amateur um, competition at the show I'm doing. And I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I never back down from anything and she put so much love and effort into me and helped me get this way. I'm going to do this show for her just to say thank you like for everything you've done for me. And I stepped on that stage and I was hooked. I got off stage and I was like, when's the next show? Let's let's do this. (laughs) And I think it was just being around such positive people um, and all the encouragement, people coming up to you going, wow, you look amazing. Like, you know, I love your suit. What have you been doing? And it was an instant new family. Like I had this new family of positive people that were encouraging and motivating and that would let nothing stop them in life from what they wanted. You know, people were like, well, this is what, you know, God gave me. This is what I have to work with. And you can mold yourself into anything you want, whether it's how you want to look, you know, your brain. People are like, well, I, you know, I'll... They weren't born that smart. <laughs> what? <laughs> I hear people that are like, oh, just they won't be like, no, I find that to be so untrue. We can really truly mold ourselves into whatever we want. And being able to compete and kind of remold to my, you know, to a better version of myself, I went, you know what? If I could turn myself into that and into that and get on stage in front of <laughs> all these people and compete in Vegas and New York and, um, you know, not care what people think. I can do this. I can go to the other side of the world and start a business. And I did. Yeah. What's the process like of coming over to the other side of the world and starting your business? I mean, you must have known like in the back of your mind, there would be a lot of challenges. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. But it feels like when you had that idea, you put a lot of your own personal values into building the business from scratch. Yeah. So Absolutely. can you tell us a little bit more about that process? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was very fortunate. Uh, my uh, husband was actually a part of building businesses around the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And um, he is a solicitor. He's an engineer. So I feel like I had a, a leg up in the game. Um, so when it came to anything legal or, um, you know, trademarking or, you know, getting my ABN and starting stuff like that, I had his support where he was kind of guiding me along the way to be in a new country. So I definitely could not have done it without him. I feel like I can do anything, but his help made it a lot easier and um, probably helped me get off the ground a lot quicker. Um, And the process was definitely not easy moving to another country where, you know, the mentality is different. It it just, it is. Every country you go to, the mentality of people is different. Um, You know, what could be popular in one country? Look at Starbucks in America. Mm. Starbucks is on every corner in America and people worship it. I know people that are like, don't talk to me until I've had my Starbucks. (laughs) Starbucks came here and failed and they lost so much much money 
And now I think there's only a few. And they say Australia is actually one of the top toughest markets in the world to break into yeah. in the world. Mm. And they say so many big companies from around the world have come here to Australia and have not made it and lost a fortune. I mean, Taco Bell used to be here <laughs> and it didn't, it didn't go well, but now they're, they're making a comeback and they're trying to do it again. And so people told me, well, if you can make it in Australia, you can make it anywhere. That's, that's, that's a tough market. Um, and sure enough, we are about to celebrate our six year anniversary. Right this March. You've got four. Yeah, we've just we've just launched our fourth, um, partnering with events uh, in Bondi, um, which was incredible. But yeah, the process it wasn't easy. Uh, it was four four and a half years of struggle and people going, I don't get it. What do you mean you drink and paint? <laughs> and to me, in my head, I'm going, a drink and a paint. Like here's the paintbrush, here's the wine glass, and people just didn't get it. They'd walk by the studio and go, Wow, this looks so pretty and colorful. I'm like, oh, you should come try it. You yeah, know, I don't know how to paint. Mm. I'm not a big drinker. I'm like, let's be honest. Everybody loves a good maybe glass of wine or bubbles. And if nothing else, just give it a go. Um, but it was it was not easy. For the first four years, we we're very slow. Mm. Wrong locations. Um, you know, barely could make it open on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and then something just clicked. What do you think it was? Uh, I think moving to the right location, which was one of the biggest lessons I learned in business is you always hear people say, oh, location, location, location. <laughs> They're not joking. That's not mm. just a saying. It is literally location, location, location. We took the route of being, you know, a, a, a young, small businesswoman. Um, I thought, let me save money on rent. Let me get something just in case this concept doesn't work. Um, you know, we'll spend a little bit more money on the back end trying to advertise. Nope. Uh, if I could do it all over again, I would have paid a lot more money for rent to be in a prime location and forget the advertising because people seeing your business and being right front and center is key. It all came down to location. I flew back up here every single month wow. for six, seven months scouting for just the perfect location. And for me, I was like, it has to be on Oxford Street. Yes. I want it in Darlinghurst. I want it on a corner. Mm -hmm. I want all glass windows. I want it near a, a, a wine and bottle shop. And the realtor just went, sure, <laughs> anything else? And I was like, that's what I want. And he would try to take me to other places. Like, oh, but it's right down the road. I'm like, nope. Has to be on the, this one's not on the corner, but it's a, nope. This one doesn't, nope. And I was adamant, like it had to be that, and it was either that or it wasn't meant to be. Mm. And I learned from the first one, don't just jump into anything. Mm. If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Something else better at the right time will come along. And when that, I actually, it's so crazy. My husband's still freaked out by it. Very stressed out, couldn't find a location. One morning I went for a jog and I went jogging down Oxford Street and I passed by Corkscrew Cellars. And I looked up my like, cork and canvas corkscrew cellars. Take a picture of that. That's really cool. That'd be awesome if they were right next to us. And I went to the shop next to them and it was all glass windows on a corner and it was an art shop. And I went, oh, why can't this please, why can't this please be available? This would be perfect. Yeah. Went home, didn't think anything of it. Two weeks later, my realtor called me and he goes, hey, I'm going to FaceTime you. I want to show you three different properties. And he starts walking down the street on fast FaceTime talking to me. And I start seeing what's behind him and I said oh, a close oh my gosh stop he said what I said are there pillows in the window there with like firemen and stuff on them and he's like how did you see that yeah and I'm like I'll take it oh my goodness and he said what do you mean I said is that the shop you're gonna go into and he said yeah and I'm like I'll take it Amazing. and he said you haven't even seen it yet and I'm like two weeks ago I went by there and said why can't this place be available you can tell a lot especially after six years walking around <laughs> six, seven nights a week looking at people's paintings, where people are at in their lives, how happy they are, if they've got something going, because you're really unleashing things that are inside of you onto the canvas without you even knowing. So, so it's really good therapy mm. to mm. to get, get all this stuff off and just, we say, tell people, leave it on the canvas. Leave it on the canvas. Get it all out and leave it on the canvas. And then frame it. <laughs> and, and, and then frame it or you can give it as a gift to yeah. somebody else and be like, this is what you've caused. <laughs> Or, I'm so in love with you, look yeah. what I made. 
Thank you so much again for joining us on the Convo Couch. We had a really beautiful and illuminating conversation with Mel. Make sure you check out Cork and Canvas. They have three locations. Do you want to share them? So we're on Oxford Street in Darlinghurst. We are on Willoughby in Crow's Nest. And we are in South Melbourne um, on Clarendon Street. And our newest uh, venture with Events Bondi mm. in Bondi Junction at Event Cinemas. So come see us there for a VIP experience. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, definitely check it out. Let out all your frustrations or stresses onto the canvas and leave it there. Um, walk in a skeptic and, and leave with a masterpiece. masterpiece. So thanks so much and join us next time. Bye. Um, I'd like to say to all the underdogs out there, if you feel like you're an underdog, um, never give up. Never let anybody dull your sparkle. Go after everything you want in life. And there is no can't. There's only can. You can do anything you want in this life, no matter how big. Uh, my dad always said you can reach for the moon, but if you miss and grab a few stars along the way, it's not so bad. So go after your dreams, do something you love, be super happy in life, and be kind to others.